Okay, we're back with more statistics. This is going to be a short, simple talk about using the regression line for prediction. So prediction using regression. Uh, so you have some kind of data, you have a y variable, you have an x variable, you have some points, you have a line, and you're trying to say, well, if x were, let's say, here, what would we predict y would be? And one thing to be very careful about, a lot of the times when you're uh, asked to make a prediction, you're asked to make a prediction way outside the regression line. So somewhere over here or over here. Um, and that, uh, that kind of reminds me of the phrase attributed to Yogi Berra that uh, pr prediction is difficult, especially, especially about the future. Um, so if you're predicting something that's outside of past experience, uh, the regression line actually becomes somewhat unreliable. But <clears throat> let's ignore that and let's just say um, we had some kind of equation involving, let's say, um, predicting the number of wins of a baseball team, of a baseball team, that's our y variable, based on the size of the payroll. And that would be our x variable. <coughs> so suppose that uh, y bar is equal to 81, that's the average number of wins. Uh, X bar is equal to, I'll make up a number, $60 million. Um, let's let SY equal uh, 14, SX equal 20. <coughs> And suppose that the correlation between the two is uh, 0.08. So by the way, I want to, um, well, let me make a bigger number. Let's say it's 0.20. Um, by the way, I want to talk a little bit about this, uh, what this correlation guy means. Hang on a second. The correlation, remember when we drew a scatter plot, we said that if the dots are really close to the line, it's a good fit. And if the dots <coughs> are kind of far from the line, even though there's still a line like that, we say it's a bad fit. Well, the correlation coefficient kind of measures that. It can take the minimum of value it can be is minus one. So minus one is less than or equal to r, and the maximum value it can have is one. So when r is greater than zero, we have an upward slope, a positive relationship between the two variables. They're positively correlated. When r is less than zero, <coughs> it's a negative slope. Um, given these, the farther from zero, the better the fit. So r equals one would be a perfect fit. And r equals zero would be no fit r equals negative 1 would also be a perfect fit, but a negative relationship. Okay. r does not measure steepness. So um, <clears throat> it measures, doesn't measure the slope of the line, so it doesn't measure the steepness of the slope. That comes from B, 
is we had in our equation y equals ax, that's y hat equals ax plus b. <coughs> the slope is b, not r. But r does measure the closeness of the fit. Okay, so that's my little digression on r. Um, so it, it kind of what's a close fit and what not depends a little bit on context, but I'd say R let's do, let's do if the absolute value of R is between let's say zero and point five. It's usually not a very close fit. Um, 0.5 to 0.8, um, sort of a decent fit. There's nothing formal about this. This is just my way of thinking about it. You know, other people probably think about it somewhat similarly. Uh, between 0.8 and 0.9, call it a good fit, better than the 0.5 to 0.8. And typically, if R is great, again, an absolute value, so it could be either greater than 0.9 or less than negative 0.9, uh, we call it a very good fit. So back in my <coughs> made-up example up here, uh, we would say that there's, with an R of 0 0.20, that's uh, not such a great fit. Okay, so let me uh, take those things and copy them down further in the blackboard. Okay, now suppose we have a problem, a question asks, predict the winds for a payroll of um, <coughs> okay, I uh, transposed x and y before. Now I've got that straightened out. Okay, so we want to predict the wins, that is the y, if the payroll is 70 million. Um, so that's so for a value of x of 70. All right, so that's our problem. The first thing we have to do is find an equation for y hat. And so we start by finding b is equal to r s y over s x is equal to 0 0.20 times 14 over 20 is equal to <coughs> 0.14. So incidentally, that says that for every million more in payroll, we expect 1.4 more wins. Um, okay, now we can solve for A is equal to Y bar minus B X bar. Uh, going back up here, that was 81 and 60 is equal to 81 minus 1.4 times 60 is equal to 72.6 uh, and if we were to interpret that literally <coughs> that would say at a payroll of zero you would get 72.6 wins that's pretty impossible um, okay so uh, now we're trying to predict what would happen with a payroll of 70 so um, we're asking what would y hat be um, if 
the payroll were 70, so it would be, oh wait, this is plus. No, no, it's not really good. So y hat equals a plus bx. x is 70. y is equal, hat is equal to a, which is 72.6, plus b, which is 1.4, 1.4 wins times 70, which would be equal to. equals 82.4. And so that would be the prediction of the number of wins you would get if you raised the payroll from 60 million as being on the average to 70 million. Um, okay, so that's it for my example of prediction.